Sarah Jacobson, Artsy Fartsy Life, and today I'm gonna show you how to use masks in your mixed media artwork. Tonight, I am going to be doing a background um, for a black relief project I'm gonna do tomorrow. I have this old background that I had made sometime and I didn't like it, I haven't used it yet, but this is gonna be perfect for this project because this project has three different types of things. It has funky pictures, all different colorful funky pictures that I would never normally use, but they all have like little faces or they have something cute. And then colorful words and then colorful backgrounds. So I'm gonna start layering these kind of one, 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 because I don't want anything to be super prominent. Um, I may keep some of the little cats and doggies in this. So this guy's my favorite. This guy's my favorite. And these cats and doggies people. So I'm probably gonna keep them towards the top. But the rest of it, I just wanna create layers here of different stuff. I have germs, I have dead fish, I have a little smiley face. I don't know, that may be too, too much or we might not use it. And so what I'm gonna put it down with is matte medium, because I don't want it to be at all shiny at this point. So I'm gonna use matte medium to put this down. And then I'm gonna use clear gesso over the top. And that's the reason I'm doing it tonight. Um, usually I try to have a little bit more light for you so it's not so bright. But the thing is, if I don't do it now, it won't be dry by tomorrow because I live in Florida. Okay, so I want this to be super random and some of this background may show through and some of it may not. I'm not that worried about it, but it will help add dimension and maybe some, you know, interest. So I'm just putting pieces down kind of randomly. You know, I'm not a diagonal kind of uh, gal, so they won't go diagonally. But I do kind of want to get the layers stuck. Um, this is an awfully big piece, so let's keep that for a little bit later. But let's get another one of these guys on here. All right, and we want everything to go off the edge because if it doesn't go off the edge, then we're gonna wind up with like some bizarre frame around it. And this is super cheap um, magazine page paper. So it is, um, there's nothing, you know, this is not quality paper. If you're gonna do magazine collage, you have to know that you have to do something to it afterwards, otherwise, um, your, your project will fall apart pretty easily because it's very lightweight and not durable. All right, that's pretty bold, so I'm going to put this up in the corner. Boop. And that's from a Friskies ad, seems. Okay. All right, let's get some words in here. And some of these words are kind of cool. And, oh, we got wrinkles. Yay, wrinkles. I like wrinkles because wrinkles give me texture in my art. If you like your art to be perfect, then you probably want to take more time than I do. Okay, um, let's get, and I, and I want to like, uh, this is supposed to be a colorful background, so I want to just alternate all kinds of words and um, colors. And see, I had like, this is weekend, weeknight, but I don't want to keep all weeknight together. I may try not to cover the little faces until I get maybe a little further. I may try to keep things looking like what they are, but you never know. All right, we got some more birds. Oh, I have a child 
who looks really sad. This is kind of a this is kind of a sad collage for me, which is why I'm using trying to use more colorful stuff maybe than I normally do. I tend to struggle with depression and today has not been a good day for me. So I am trying to do a little bit of art, maybe to feel a little bit better. Sometimes that helps. All right. All right, and when you use like mixed media, matte media, um, uh, bah, 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 Mod Podge, anything like that, you kind of go under it and over it, and that's what makes it sturdy. So I'm gonna do this up here. Maybe if I need some more later, I'll cut it off, but. Um, okay. Do we have anything else for the back? Nope, let's just do some more words then. Well, that's kind of cool. I like this. This is magic. I believe in magic. Today, I was magical. I was, we were driving down to help my dad move his house, and I just had a feeling come over me that I should call him and make sure he knew that we were coming and come to find out that he didn't know we were coming and he didn't want us to come help because he was tired. He's older and he and his partner have moved into a new house and they had been working all day and they decided they didn't need our help today. Um, so it was a good thing we didn't go down. That's dead fish. I feel like anytime you can make art with dead fish, it's a good day. And I'm using Liquitex Matte Medium for this. So. I'm using a little bit better medium. Usually I would use Mod Podge, um, mostly because I want it to dry, dry underneath um, the next coat. So I tried to go with a little bit of a better product. Not that Mod Podge isn't good. I use Mod Podge a lot. Um, okay, so what do we got going on here? See, I think using that... Um, so, so if you ever make backgrounds that you don't like, um, this is the beauty of it, right? So I didn't like that background, but you can still see little bits of it here and there. And the nice thing about it is that um, I didn't, ha like, I don't have to cover the whole thing because it's, it's, um, it's already got a background. So you're just seeing little pieces of it pick pick in and out where it could have been really intimidating to try to cover the whole thing. Now I just smush stuff down wherever I feel like it, right? Okay, so now let's, oh, we have some more birds. Let's put some more birds in here. Okay. How are you? Oh, fair to Midland, getting better. Okay, let's see, this is a thing right here. And then let's put in our, our main ones so they don't, so we still have some stuff to put over top of them because we don't want them floating just in nowhere, right? Oh, that bird got covered up. But that's fine. We know she's in there. Don't be sad. It's it's okay. She wasn't a great bird. All these pictures are pictures that I probably would not use um, in my artwork for my magazine collages. I tend to use, um, like I would make cat people, but I wouldn't use already made cat people because that's what I like. Do. All right, so we have this dog. I like this dog very much. Okay, so let's put daily on here. Let's get some more fish, dead fish. Let's 
see, could those go? Where could, oh, they could cover up this cat a little bit. Not all the way, but we don't want anything to be really, oh, let's use this last piece of, um, oh, that'll be perfect. Use this last piece of uh, germs. Okay. So that is a great background for what I am thinking about doing. And now what I'm going to do, and I can, I probably should use a different brush, but I'm gonna use this brush, is I'm gonna take one final coat of, of this over clear gesso. Okay, so if you follow along, matte medium is a coating, right? So this will be a little bit coated this will, um, you could do um, things over it and it wouldn't soak into the magazine paper as well. But the thing is that um, as a property, it's not good for doing artwork on because it's um, almost as if it's a, got a resin or a plastic on it. And I wanna do a lot of different kinds of black stuff on here tomorrow. So I really want it to be, um, I really want it to be a medium that I can use. So I'm gonna use clear gesso as the last coat. This would be as if I put a white coat over this with white gesso, um, but I don't wanna cover up all the colors. Part of my thing for this project is having the colors. So what I'm just gonna do is this doesn't look like it's gonna dry clear because it looks white right now but it's clear gesso, so I will be able to work over it just as if I had gessoed with white gesso, just clear. Does that make sense? I hope so. Anyways, that's gonna be our last step today. This was kind of a fast day um, because I didn't want anything to be important. I live in Florida, so one of my problems with living in Florida and doing artwork is that it takes a wee minute for anything to dry. So if I were to do this tomorrow, I wouldn't be able to to get started doing anything until later in the day. This way, if I feel like 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 arting in the morning, I can art in the morning and it'll all be dry. And I have a plan, so I have a plan in my head, so I wanna be able to get up and work my plan. So there you go, that was this. That magic just will not stick down, will it? And it popped up again. Okay, well, maybe that'll be part of it. Okay, talk to you tomorrow. So now we are going to do a super fancy high-tech masking technique. So this is gonna be, you gotta watch this because this is gonna be uh, tough. Okay, I'm gonna take typing paper, and I kinda of want one big circle, so we're gonna make a circle. I lied, it's not super fancy. It's typing paper in circles. So I'm trying to get an approximation of a circle. Close enough. All right, now we're gonna make another circle that's smaller, different size. Okay, so that's gonna be two of our circles. And then we need a circle down here because I like this guy. And then let's just do a couple random circles. We'll put those somewhere. Okay, then you get your scissors. So we're making masks. This is, that's what this is called, where you mask off an area and I'm gonna have masks and then I'm gonna have blanks. So I'm gonna have the inside of the circle and I'm gonna have the outside mask, right? And these are, like I said, super high tech. You need specialized equipment like scissors and typing paper. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here to my circle and then I'm just gonna start cutting around it. 
And the reason I went for an approximation is I'm not a great circle drawer, but I also don't want this to be a perfect circle. If I did, I just got the Martha Stewart circle cutter, which we'll be trying out, but this isn't that kind of project. So now I have this mask and this circle. So we're gonna keep those two together. And we're gonna do that five, four more times. So now the reason why I want a mask and a circle is because I am going to journal some words over the uh, pictures that I wanna show, or not, maybe not show, but to at least be somewhat there. And I want to have a circle edge around them. So let's do that. Actually, now they're big to, big to small upside down. So let's grab these. Okay. And this is, this is my anxiety journal. I journal page, I think I'm calling it. I haven't. I'm anxious about what I should go. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm a goober. Okay, so I want the big one up here. And then I think I want the medium one over here with this dog. Okay. And then I have this cat. So I want to... doesn't really matter. I mean, I could take them off and do them, but I kind of want to get... Uh, Let's see. Maybe we'll do them this way. We'll do them one at a time. Okay. Two at a time, maybe. Okay. All right. So, what I'm going to do is write some words in here. And I am going to use an embossing pen. And what that means is that this is gonna be clear so you won't be able to see your words until you put black embossing powder on them. And so I think I'm gonna to try to work, I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna to try to work left to right so I don't have, well, I guess I have to since I'm gonna be putting the mask down. So you can write whatever words you want, but I'm gonna write words about um, that I'm feeling. And you can write a whole word, you can write paragraphs, whatever. Um, and these do not have to be perfect. They just need to be words that matter to you. Um, so you're not going to try to write them perfectly or write them out first because as with everything we do, we're probably not going to see much of them. And now I have to find my black embossing powder and we know it's over here. And then we're just going to. And see how it's covering up part of it, but not all of it because it was in that circle. I'm going to use those circles again later. So now we emboss. And since this is collage, those papers underneath may bubble and move and all that, but that's fine. We don't mind that. Okay, so now we've done those two. Let's put our embossing powder back in. And I'm gonna do some more circles. So these are these two circles. So now I need the smaller circle and that's gonna go over these guys. Oops, I don't need the circle, I need the mask. Okay. 
And part of this process is just to get some of the feelings you might have out. Um, and, and this isn't for anybody else because you may not even be able to tell what my words are once I'm done. Okay. So now I did my two sets of words, and these words are for you. They're not for anybody else, right? So this is a journal page, less than a work of art. I'm not trying to make art here. I'm trying to give my feelings a place to hang out. Okay, we're gonna pour this in. Okay, so now we have those done. And because for me, and I have to dry them off. How are we doing on time? We're doing okay. I have to talk to a group of ladies up in Conifer, Colorado, where I used to live. Now I'm going to write a word that's happier, right? It may not be a happy word to you, but it's something that makes me happy and gives me hope for the future. Um, if I can find my embossing pen. Literally, I had it here two seconds ago. All right, well, I have another one. All right, so this one is going to be stuff that makes me feel better. So my first word I'm going to tell you is hope. And isn't that funny that this embossing pen is so much thinner than the other one? And my happy feelings are so much thinner than what my other ones are right now. So maybe it was a happy accident. And this one is going to be dogs and kids because I spent some time with my kids yesterday in the car driving around and they were... Um, super helpful for me feeling better. And this one's going to be a few of them. Work, peeps, and friends. See, and friends won't even be on there. So this is, this is not for anybody else. This is just for me. And I will know what they mean. Oops. Well, that won't work at all. Unless we have embossing powder. You can't emboss without embossing powder. It's a rule. Okay. And now we emboss. So that is going to be all I can do for right now. I'll come back and finish. Well, just keep working on this later. Okay, so we all get using a stencil like this, right? We have stencils. I could have used a regular stencil, but the reason I wanted to cut it out was so that I would have the blanks of it, right? So now we want to go back and we want to kind of match up our circles with our circles. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We can cheat it later if we don't get them exactly right. And if you care more than I care, then you could be very careful about it and know which goes with which and have real circles. It's your art, so you get to pick how much you care about stuff. Okay, so now I have my circles. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to um, emboss around these circles. Okay, and I am going to use the Distress Embossing Dabber. 
And this has kind of a valve inside of it. So when you push it down, you have to get the embossing goods out. And I have a little bit of embossing goods, but you gotta kind of let it fall down for a second because it's a thick liquid. And so now I'm gonna push down and I'm gonna go around this circle and I'm overlapping the circle, okay? I'm going to go around the circles and I'm overlapping them. And you can hear it catching. And the reason it's catching is because we used that um, uh, clear gesso instead of using um, like Mod Podge or, or gel medium. And so it's really kind of rough. It's really, my paper feels really rough and grainy, which is fine. That's kind of what I want it to do. Okay, so now we have, let's see. I don't know if I feel like there's a lot on there, but let's try it. Let's see what happens. Are we getting any, or do we need to do that step again? Oh, well, it's just fine. And I may have to do, oh, that's, that one's fine. Huh. It was a little bit of a non-believer. It just didn't feel very googie. And I like that it isn't perfectly around, and it isn't perfectly around because of me, because I didn't go all around it. I've got a weird cutout in there. Let's get that out of there. And let's not go over the... funny end this time. There we go. Good job, me. Okay. All right. So that is what I wanted it to do. Isn't it great when a plan comes together? Okay. So now we emboss. Okay, so now I have a black line around all of my circles, and I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to try to line them up. Remember, if you want perfect circles, make perfect, perfect circles from the start. I don't care about that. I'm just trying to get them to kind of fit in there. Let's see, that's definitely this one. Maybe it goes this way. There we go. And this is why I needed to have these blanks is because now I'm going to make some more black around this. Oops. And I need to have a extra piece of paper, an extra piece of good paper to catch some of the stuff that we're going to have. So there's no point, in, I'm going to be um, spraying, I'm going to be doing some, some stuff, and there's no point in wasting paper, right? So we're going to use this. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to spray some water. This is part of the reason why we had to put the gesso coat on, because if we didn't have a gesso coat that's dry and we sprayed the water on it, all of the um, really lightweight, cheesy magazine pages would would not do well. They are very lightweight. So now we're gonna put on a little bit of water. And if you wanted, you could, once the once these papers get wet, they'll kind of stick where they belong. Um, but if you wanted to, you could put a little bit of washi tape on them, um, like a circle underneath. You know how we did when we were kids? and then that would stick them on too, but the water will stick it on. 
but I just want to get enough water on here that when I spray, um, I'm gonna start with some black soot, uh, actually uh, hickory smoke oxide, distress oxide, but I want it to move a little bit. I don't want it to, um, to go on in little dots, right? Okay, there we go. Oops. Not good to spray your embossing pen. Let's get some kitchen roll and wipe off our embossing pen. I think that was the good one even, darn it. Well, things happen in the craft room. Isn't it what happens here stays here or is that Vegas? Okay, I miss Vegas, but it did remind me that I need to close that. Good job, me. Okay, so now I have this. I want to actually smush it out a little bit. I don't want it to be dotty. So we're going to come in here. We're going to smush. We're going to smush. Give my circle back. Right? I want to keep those bright colors under there. Okay, now let's do some darker colors. And I and it, that that um embossing will be a resist for this. The, the black soot will not stick to that, so we can go around, or the hickory smoke will not stick to that, so we can go around and blacken that back up. That's no bother, because that's a water resistant, or a water um, movable ink. So it's going to come right off the plastic layer that is my embossing. That was the only one that could be a little um, little bit of a downer if you saw that and you thought, oh my gosh, my black got not as black. But that's okay. We're okay, right? All right. So now let's do a Seth Apter eyes ink layer. I'm going to hold this because this will create black, right? And I don't want to get too much black. Okay, here we go. Good job, good job, good job. Let's come in. We have our thing. Boop, boop, boop. Pick it up kind of straight. Boop, boop, boop. Pick it up kind of straight. Where's our circles? We knew that would happen, right? So now we got to put our circles back. All right, that is cool. All right, so now that I have a little bit of something something going on, I want to get some uh, uh, pattern and texture in here. I don't want this to just be black on the back or I might as well have just painted it black, right? So let's grab a stencil. What about this new one? Let's see what happens with this. We're gonna do Seth again, but I'm gonna do a, so first off, we're gonna do this. And second off, I'm gonna do a spritz of water. And then we're gonna do a Seth. Okay, there we go. And we should have See, we have a little bit of a pattern there. Now, as we always do, let's smoosh this over here. Get a little bit of a pattern there. And I'm gonna do the opposite over here. Okay, spritz of water. Okay. And then we're gonna, uh-oh, this circle moved, we're gonna, Come over here. Okay, so we got some, some checkerboard things going. Okay, now let's not waste our stuff. Push down, get that off there. Push down, get that off there. Okay, that's good. All right, now I'm going to dry this a little bit because I want to... 
Okay, so this time I'm going to do littler circles with no water. So now I'm starting to build layers of black, right? Which is what I'm trying to do. These are going to be good somewhere sometime, huh? Okay, so now this is just going to be plain, no water, and this should be pretty intense on here. Oh, that's nice. Okay, let's come over here. And you kind of want to do the opposite in places. So if I have spots here, I want the anti-spots there. Okay, let's do one over here. Okay, Ooh, that's good. Okay, so now we got some of that going on. Let's see what we like. All right, I may be done. I'll keep them, but I may be done with that. Maybe not. Maybe not. I may have to emboss again. You know how that goes. Okay, let's try. Okay, so yes, I do need to emboss more. And I am looking for a certain stamp, this one, which is my favorite stamp. I should probably buy another one. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our circles back and just so you know, these circles are wet. Uh-oh. I've lost one of my tiny circles. It's got to be attached to somebody else's circle. There it is. There we go. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, do I have my thing? I will use the top of the Versamark. So now... I'm going to take this, and because we have those covered, right, we can make this stamp wherever we want. It's going to leave the color underneath, but we're going to get the black all around it. Okay, let's try and see what happens with this. And this takes a lot of, oops, where's the, where's the lid? You're using it for your stamp thing. Okay, so let's, this one, we can try the trick where we start at the top and let it roll the whole way down because we have stamps the whole way down, right? Okay. Do, do, do. All right, we'll go down this side first. What I mean by that is you do this and then you let it go down and as it goes down, it hangs up on the places you have embossed. Okay, so that is good. I love what we're doing here. I needed more solid black spots. I wasn't feeling like the embossing was solid enough. And that stamp does wonders for making solid places in my art. 
and I am going to have to order a new jar of black. All right. So let's clean this off a tiny bit because we got embossing. Oh, I moved you. Sorry. We got embossing. We got black. We got everything here. All right. Now we're going to emboss again, and then we're going to do something fun. Okay. So I was thinking of a question you might have while I was embossing this. You may be thinking to yourself, why couldn't I just use an ink pad for this instead of an embossing, um, embossing it? And until I find an ink pad that has that super, super dark, glossy black look, I'm stuck with having to emboss it because all the ink pads that I use are matte. Um, I haven't yet found one that will make the, um, the ink so darn glossy. Okay, so I'm getting close to being done here. Um, I like what we're doing, but our very last step is going to be, and I like a fluffy brush for this. So this is a fluffy brush. Um, we're going to use a Distress Tree inker. We're going to put some ink out here. We might need more, but that's fine. And we're going to kind of go around the edge. And kind of make a frame for this. But without it being perfect. Like the, the, the very last thing I would want, and we're going to need a lot more reinker. Um, the very last thing I would want would be a super perfect edge when I have all this delicious, like weirdness in the middle. Um, so let's just go, but we want, I want a frame for this page. I don't want it to just kind of be floating off into Never Never Land. And the re-inkers give me that really, really dark black because it is concentrated distress ink, right? So this is super concentrated that you would use to re-ink your, um, re your ink pad. So there's a lot of color in it. And I should probably have cut my paper because I don't know how far in I really need to go to put this. And they, they, they're not great paint. So just in case you think you're going to paint with just three inkers, if you don't add water to them, they, um, they tend to, to, to dry up relatively quickly. I mean, I don't think it's crazy, but if I were to give it a little spritz of water, it would definitely, um, and then, so I'm not wasting, I can go back. All right, you ready? So if we go back and put some water on there, we can kind of, rejuvenate that, but I wanted that super harsh dark line in there to be my edge. And then this is more of a light. All right, and I think I'm gonna call that done. Yeah, I was thinking I might go around it with, um, to kind of hook the the words to the edges, which I might do. And if I do that, I, in fact, let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's not do that with inker sitting on our mat because we will get black ink everywhere. All right, so we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna take my Posca pen and I'm just gonna come around here and make that circle and kind of, and don't forget that's paint, so that's not dry yet. 
and hook the edge of my circles to my words. So it's it's more of a you can cheat that any way you want. You know, you could you could make it as filled in as you want. I'm pretty happy with where I got, but I feel like on a couple of these we really didn't get to the edge. And so I am going to cheat that a bunch on this one. There we go. Because I kind of don't want it to look like it's just floating in that circle. I want it to look like it's a part of the circle. I think that cleaned it up really nice. And this one I'm going to cheat too. And this will be pretty shiny too because it is acrylic paint in this Posca paint pen. There we go. Nice. All right. So that's called it done. Okay, I think that looks great. I'm super happy with how that turned out. There's a little bit of, I know what's peeking in through there, but nobody else would. There's color behind it. It's black, which is my favorite color for art. I like it. And I will show you the finished product, pretty pictures at the very end. So there you have it, Tara Jacobson, Artsy Fartsy Life. <music>